Hello and welcome to another edition of The Tigers Down Under. I'm your host as always, Alex, and with me tonight I have Dan. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, very good, very good. It's uh, full-on football season now. First game of the season, done and dusted. Transfer window, window closing uh, quite rapidly in a couple of hours as we record this episode, so I will keep an eye on any breaking news as we go. Um and yeah, we're right in the thick of it. So we'll um, start with the game from the weekend. We'll touch on some transfer rumours and then look ahead to the two games we have coming up against uh, Reading and Tranmere. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll start with the game on the weekend. I guess a uh, pretty disappointing result in the end after such a blistering start to get off to. Um, I tweeted out at half time that my main concern was fitness and, and players keeping up the tempo that we'd, we'd kind of set for ourselves in the first half. And... Um, a, ha- a handful of players were really, you know, to be commended for their efforts throughout the entire game. But um, unfortunately, it was the case that we did concede a couple of goals to Swansea early in the second half and, and couldn't go on and uh, snatch an equaliser. So um, an unfortunate loss to start the season, but I guess a few positives to take out of it. Yeah, I think um, just with, I mean, we've been talking about it recently, just with how drastic the change has been in our style of play and how aggressive um our our style is now that um that fitness is always going to be an issue especially in these first few um probably the first month of the season i'd say is we may see these sort of issues um recurring a little bit um because as good as pre-season is there's always that difference that different level of intensity once you get into those games that actually you know where you're playing for points so i think um from all accounts, you know, the, the first 45 was um, outstanding um, and it was disappointing to that they that the boys switched off um, to start that second half and, and allowed those two quick goals. But I think um, overall, like, it's we're, we're sort of having one of those happy with the performance but not the result probably overall <clears throat> um, is my sort of take on the game. Um, Which it was I think good. I, th- I think that was the issue last season, wasn't it? We had quite a lot of those performances, and I, I guess the focus this year is going to be on turning those into results. Yeah, and I think um, if if we if we repeated this if this performance was repeated, you know, six or seven games in, um, and it's you know that same we played really well for a lot of the game, but we switched off, you know, in the key moments, then nothing's really changed from you know where we were last year to where we are this uh, last season to where we are this season but um the first few games i mean overall they've still the squad still only played maybe half a dozen games now in this system um yeah and that's if they played if that if they played in like every preseason game sort of thing like so there's um there's still there's still time. It's you know we still got another 45 games to go. We can be a little bit patient, but um, I think uh, I mean the signs are good. Um, lots of players played you know really well. Just just um, um just lacking that sort of that match that real match fitness and and it, I mean it is very difficult to maintain that that really high running high intensity um sort of game and that tempo for for the 90 minutes so yeah especially in august when it's going to be a bit hotter and it's going to be a bit tougher for the players um speaking of players who played well in the match i thought batty was you know head and shoulders man on the match um scored the opening goal was very very good very impressive with his um pressing and his tackling and his interceptions um, I think there was some statistic that he'd made seven interceptions by half time or something like that, which was the most of anyone on the pitch by by some way. Uh, that that could be the wrong number, but but it was certainly a very impressive um, figure. He he was seemingly cramping quite late or struggling with some sort of injury, but had to stay on because we'd used our subs. Um, but but a really impressive game from him and, and another one who. Um, when we were sort of listing the side in preseason, wasn't necessarily a player who was in the first eleven in our minds. Um, did captain the side in one of the games, um, but <clears throat> was seemingly going to be overlooked for maybe his more experienced teammates, um, Stewart, uh, Henriksen, Irvine. Henriksen seems to be on the way out, which then opens the door potentially for Batty. But we've had George Honeyman come in, so um, he's really one of those guys who's really sort of staked his claim for a place in the eleven. 
Um, and Stuart as well. Stuart, we've already touched on last season about how he's improved from his first um, season with the club, but he seems to have taken another step up again and, and really looks um, really at home in that sort of pivot role, I guess you would say, at the bottom of that, that uh, midfield trio. Um, and seem to have a really impressive game. And then um, George Long in goal, making some really incredible saves. Um, funnily, when we saw him debut against, I think it was Sheffield United, um, and he sort of let in a couple of shots, and Leeds fans were howling about the fact that he let in both shots on target. Um, you know, whether there's that perception that he's he's not going to be a great shot stopper, but he, he's really looked really good in that game. Uh, and, and, you know, hopefully a really good start for him and a, and a good bit of confidence. Yeah, yeah. Um... I mean, I hope so. I think the other thing that I saw was that there was a um, behind closed doors friendly match um, on, I think, Monday night for a lot of the guys that um, the new signings and guys that didn't um, start on the weekend got an extra hit out. So um, guys like Eves um, and I think Honeyman played in that one um, as well. So just um, extra extra work with them and you I you know with that with that sort of game under their belt as well you sort of start expecting some of those guys to start sliding into um into our main um, match day squad and it, and it's good that there's a seemingly um high uh focus on getting fitness and, and experience and runs into the legs of the players and getting them used to the style the formation um saying to players well look if you didn't get a go on the weekend here's some extra minutes for you to get that get the runs in your legs. And for someone like Eves, who missed a couple of our preseason games, I think that's really important. Um, I guess um, on the downside, some of the more concerning signs from the weekend uh, from in terms of personnel, I thought Dico didn't offer a whole lot up top device um, with a seemingly um, an injury that might keep him out of a couple of games, which um, obviously we ex- experienced a little bit last year. And, um, is probably part of the reason that we're looking at bringing a couple of centre backs into the club, and and Kingsley on the left was just very, um, very had a very poor game and and really kept giving Dyer a lot of space and a lot of chances and really sort of led to a couple of their goals. And in fact, um, before before I hear your thoughts on that, um, I, I should mention as we're as we're talking, um, there has been a report that we're we're looking at um, buying or or bringing in Callum Elder from Leicester, who's a left back. So if um, Tierney's on his way to Arsenal, if Celtic are now looking at getting Kingsley, then maybe this will be our, our the player that we turn to as our solution to um, our left back problem. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I think Kingsley probably overall has been a bit hit and miss um, in his City career. I can't really like picture any or like remember any like extended periods where he's played. You know like really consistently well, um, which is a bit of a shame. But, um, I mean, if he leaves and we bring one in, we're still sort of in the same position where we don't have a lot of depth in that position. Um, and Dicko is, I mean, Dicko, he always, always tries hard, but I don't, I just, I don't know if this, this sort of um, system suits him completely. I think he probably works better having, like in a front two where he's tighter with another player who he can, um, you know, hold the ball up and, and work with a bit more. But um, I think, uh, I, I think Eves is obviously been earmarked as the one who will be the, like the, the starter in, in all likelihood. Um, so hopefully, you know, if Dicko coming on late, you know, with a lot of energy, um, might be able to hopefully nick a few goal, late goals. Like he, I think he um, came on late at the end of last year. I think it was against Swansea last season and, and nicked a late goal. Um, but uh, Device, yeah, don't know. He's he's so young and it's a shame to see him having this sort of injury um, trouble. It's never anything major, but just lots of little niggly minor injuries it seems to be, which is a bit of a shame. But um, yeah, a couple of guys we've been linked with, I think... Um, yeah, so not yeah. sure. Well, well, so so we can chat about a couple of the guys that we've been linked to. I mean, um, Matthew Pennington apparently making the move across from Everton, um, centre back, decent prospect. He he's played a fair bit for Everton already. He um, actually scored in a Merseyside derby as well, so he's got a bit of a pedigree to him. Um, seems to be a reasonable 
Um, you know, I mean, when we look at someone like Tafazoli, who looks promising and encouraging, but he's played his whole career at League One, whereas Pennington's played quite a bit of Premier League football, it's a bit of a higher calibre player to bring in um, to give you that bit of depth and support. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think uh, I saw the other day that um, McDonald's still injured. He's still I don't even know how how long away how far away he is from um, a return, but it's good just to um, yeah bring in someone who's got um, that just played yeah at a, at a higher level is always is always good. So um, I think he should be a pretty solid signing um, if he come if he comes in or when he comes in. And then um, in in just the last couple of hours, we've been linked to. A Wigan mid- midfielder who has seemingly now had terms accepted and undergoing his medical at the moment or finished his medical in um, Lopez. No, I guess not a lot to say about him. He seems to be a um, replacement for Henriksen or a part replacement for Henriksen along with Honeyman. Um, young, largely untried at this level, so just another one of those gambles. And I mean... As much as we want to be critical of the club's recruitment policy the last few years, and you look at some of the players that we've brought in, Kingsley, Terrell, probably the biggest misses of the lot. I mean, that's a, maybe a little bit harsh on, on Terrell, but, and, and I, yeah, I guess you could throw Dicko in with them. But by and large, I mean, you look at your Irvines, um, your Stewart even, who's turned it around, Device, Burke... Long. I mean, they've all been actually quite promising and actually turned out to be quite solid acquisitions. So it's hard to judge him too much, I guess, not knowing a whole lot about him. But I guess you can be hopeful that that he might turn out to be quite a decent acquisition. Yeah, and I think there's, I mean, there's one other player who I can think of that we brought from a lower league who I think was at four four seasons out of five. He was in a team that got promoted from a lower league up. <laughs> um, in Clucas, that is went yeah. something like that something crazy so it's and you know went from being a like a winger in or something and then turned into one of the best like center midfielders that we had in the squad so um i guess it's just that sort of that pressure environment you never really know what um what a player is going to do um until they're in the in the situation but i think you're right when you say we've done um like overwhelmingly good, I think, um, really, um, when you consider the whole picture and, and the amount of players, like we've done a lot of, a lot of sort of panic last minute purchases and, and things, but even, you know, most of them, as you say, have, have worked out okay and, um, have, have managed to, to, whether it's turn their form around or whatever, but, um, <clears throat> have shown, you know, a lot of good signs in, in city colors. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it'll be. It, it does sound like it's shaping up to be an interesting um, closing few hours of the window. Um, I think if we can get a full back in, if we can get a, se- a central midfielder in, I'd be reasonably happy. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I would have liked to have seen us try and push for a striker and and as you say, maybe even another sen- uh, a full back. Um, and and look, that remains to be seen. I think. It's interesting that, um, and I've been kind of saying the last few episodes that I, I've expected us to make another big sort of loan move as we have the last few years where we've brought in, you know, the Chris Martins of the world last year. And, and I think, um, you know, was it Harry? Did Harry Wilson? No, Harry Wilson came in in January. I, there, there was somebody that came in um, under Slutsky quite late as well. I think maybe one of the Chelsea defenders or something where um, we did seem to make moves quite late. Um, in the loan market as well. So it's interesting that we're bringing in a few permanent deals at the moment in Lopez and um, potentially um, Elder from Leicester. But um, yeah, it's going to be a very interesting end to the window. Um, uh, on, 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 a, um, on the home front, I guess, in terms of players not leaving, um, it's looking quite positive now that Bowen and Grzycki are likely to stay, whereas Henriksen, I think, is quite looking quite likely to leave. Uh, yeah, I mean that's from all reports. Um, the prices that they set on Bowen and Grzycki, they're staying firm on. But I believe that they actually, so they had a price for Henriksen, and the clubs since lowered that. Um, but I think in addition to that, so far that the 
bids that have come in are still underneath their current valuation um, from what I've been reading. Yeah, so that'll be interesting. I, I mean, I, I'm sort of looking at this Lopez transfer and sort of thinking maybe we're being tempted to make that that sale for um, Henriksen go through, but um, for Bowen and Grzycki, we're not really making any move for, for, for another winger. I know we've got Bowler, but I, I just don't see the club really sort of pushing for either of them to leave. It's not... I think with Bowen still essentially having two years on his deal, one year left plus the option for another, I think we're quite relaxed to, to leave it till January or even next summer before we really sort of try and cash in. And Grzycki sounds like the club's quite happy just to, to let him run his contract down. And he's playing good enough football that um, seems to be quite a valuable addition to the squad. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> it's uh, over the last uh, probably 12 months, um, We've seen, we've we finally got to see the Grisicki that we, I guess, expected to see when he first signed for us. Um, there were flashes in the the uh, year or so before that, but um, he's really, yeah, just starting. He's over the last year or so got played really, really consistent and really dangerous football. So it, um, with if we if we do maintain Bowen and Grisicki in our squad. Um, preferably for the whole season, but even if it's only till January, um, they we saw how damaging they were last season, and there's absolutely no reason why they can't replicate that. Absolutely. Um, well, we'll look ahead now to... We've got a couple of games coming up. We've got Reading um, at home on Saturday, first home game of the season. Um, they, they've had a reasonable transfer window. Um, I think they signed Puskas from... Was it Inter Milan? Um, ahead of Birmingham, so that's a pretty reasonable signing for them. Um, but they did lose on the weekend to Sheffield Wednesday 3-1. So um, off to a bit of a rocky start on the pitch. Um, I mean, Reading, are, Reading, at least judging on their position last season, are one of those teams that, you know, we've got to be sort of winning the home games against. And um, especially this early in the season, given how we started last season, we'll be looking to get off to a pretty quick start at home. Yeah, um... I think, yeah, when, when you think about how slow we were to get off the mark last season, um, really, uh, we really need to take advantage of these home games, turn the KCOM into a fortress, as the uh, as the saying sort of goes. So um, I'd expect them, I think they said, like everyone said, uh, Lee High came out and said, and McCann came and said, they, they, they know, you know, they've learned from their mistakes. They know what they did wrong on the weekend. And um, I mean, if they go out and do, um, you know, and re- and rectify that and and do everything right on the weekend, um, I'm I mean I would be expecting them to to come away with the points. Yeah, it, it'll certainly be an interesting one, and I guess we've got at least one enforced change um, for Device quite likely. Um, do you sort of see Tafazoli potentially stepping in? I mean. Presuming this deal goes through for Pennington, I think it probably comes a bit too soon for him to be stepping straight into the side. So I, I guess that leaves it quite obviously for Tavazzoli. Yeah, you'd have to assume it would be Tavazzoli. He's been training with the squad for you know long enough now. He trained through preseason and and everything. It would be um, quite an ask to have Pennington sign today and play on the weekend, um, unless it was absolutely necessary. I couldn't um, imagine that happening straight away yeah well I, I guess um i can't really foresee too many other changes to the 11 i guess if kingsley gets shipped out to celtic that's the only other one potentially i guess that would mean lehigh starting at left back and mckenzie at right back um would be sort of the uh the obvious solution to that one um i guess with the league cup game during the week afterwards it gives us an opportunity to really um, rotate the squad and, and see the new signings get a chance against lower league opposition. So so I suspect that for the Reading game, we'll probably try and go with that 11 again um, and give them the chance to really sort of get to grips with the, the, the tactics, with the tempo, um, and get that fitness into the legs. Um, so, so in terms of the score prediction, would you see us coming out of this one with a, a, a win, maybe a 2-1 sort of victory? Uh, yeah, that's sort of around what I was thinking. A two, I mean, I want to say two nil, but I just think, um, just I I probably expect um, us to concede. I mean, we've conceded I think at least one in every game we've played so far under McCann. So um, it would be hard to envision us keeping a clean sheet. <laughs> but yeah, yeah like I, back to the back to the roaring days of Slutsky where we were, you know. <laughs> 
yeah. conceding but I, two or three a game. But I think we have enough um, enough talent um, to put to score some goals. I probably think Eves might start this weekend as well. That might be the only other cha- yeah. the other change I could think of. But um, and I mean, it'd be interesting to see the difference um, with Eve starting versus Dicko and, and what sort of combinations they can, those front three can form. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then as, as mentioned, we've got Tranmere during the week. I think it's the Tuesday, well, the Wednesday morning, our time, um, which would certainly prove an opportunity for guys like Bowler, potentially Milinkovic if he's fit, Honeyman if he's not in the side on the weekend, um, Lopez, um you know, whoever else is, is sort of signing for us, Pennington, whoever, um, to really get a go. Um, I guess it would give um, us a chance to rotate keepers as well, um, see how that goes. Um, and, and I guess, yeah, not not really a whole lot to lose in the Cup. I don't expect that we've got much expectation of progressing in the Cup, but I guess against Tranmere, you'd, you'd sort of be hoping we can progress. Yeah, I think um, I, we probably still should be getting the um, getting the result um, and going through to the next round. But I guess I think realistically, like our priority has to be on the league. So, and then I guess it becomes that whole debate of whether the cup beca- is a distraction or a benefit in yeah. terms of games and everything. But I think at least for this round, I think it's a benefit, particularly coming so soon after the transfer window mm. closes. It, it gives us a really good chance to, to see new signings in a relatively risk-free situation. Yeah, I think... Um, I just mean, yeah, in terms of a you know yeah. A, yeah. extended cup run a fairy tale. Sort I think of. given given our, um, but, our our tactics this season, I definitely think a cup run would uh, be pretty tiring on the uh, on the players. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no. I, I mean, I would expect that we could beat um, Tranmere, but that's what are the the magic of the cup? Anything can happen. <laughs> Um, and, and talking about the magic of football, um, as we're going to try and do every week, we're going to do a football flashback to a game around about this point of the season, however many years ago. And um, Premier League starts back up this weekend, and we thought we'd look back at um, one of our more memorable opening weekends in the Premier League, uh, where we knocked off the reigning champions, Leicester. I believe at the time we were the first side to uh, to knock off the reigning champions on the opening weekend. Um, I think it was the following year Burnley knocked off Chelsea to repeat the uh, the success. But at the time, um, you know, it was, it was a couple of weeks after the infamous photo of the, what was it, the six players over in Austria at a training camp. Um, and we had 11 players start where we didn't make any subs because we didn't really have any subs on the bench, although we had a very young Jared Bowen sitting on the bench who, you know, who knows what he could have done if he came on. Um, but, you know, Maguire was injured, so we had Livermore at centre-back. That was when he got a bit of a run at centre-back for a couple of weeks. Um, Jakubovic in goal, El Mahamedy at right-back, Robertson at left-back, Davies alongside Livermore. In the midfield of, you know, Myler, Huddleston, Klukas and Snodgrass with Hernandez and Diamande up top. And of course, you know, as we sort of touched on it last week, the the infamous or the famous uh, double bicycle kick goal scored by Diamande put us in the lead before Snodgrass secured the points um, after half time, where um, Mares had scored a penalty for Leicester. So, yeah, v- very exciting start to that season. We were sort of going into it with such low expectations and low hopes because we may, I think, we'd literally made no signings at that point of the season. Bruce had quit, we had Phelan in charge, um, and yet somehow the players sort of came together and, and made it work. Yeah, it was a um it was a wild start to the season to I think it was only it wasn't even long before the season started. I think Steve that Bruce resigned. Um it was only I think it was only like two or three weeks or something. It wasn't very it wasn't long at all. And then yeah, Phelan took over. We somehow you know, um, got lucky, I suppose, and and ground out this result. Um, then won at Swansea. Feeling got manager of the month. All sorts of wild things happened to start that season. Um, great start, um, and then it sort of t- tailed off a bit. But no, this was um, this was a crazy game. I just watched the uh, highlights for it before, and the the penalty they got was Huddleston stepped on Demarai Gray outside the box, yeah, and he fell right. into the box, and um, there was a couple of um, some some good free kicks taken from both sides, um, 
but I think uh, just Davies' presence in the box um, on on set pieces was um, sort of what made the difference. I think he was um, for the he was involved in a couple of um, really good opportunities. I think there was one header which he just sh- um, put wide of the post early on off a corner or a free kick, and then um, I think it, it bounce it comes off his back. Um, before Schmeichel makes the save and it bounces down for Diamande and Hernandez oh, right. to have a swing at it. Um, he's just, he was, uh, he's just, a, he was quality in that, in that box for us um, on you know, many, many occasions. But um, yeah, that was, uh, it was a crazy game. And just, yeah, to think that you can go at the Premier League and, and not make any subs and, and manage to come out on top is, um, I mean, I I don't know how many teams don't make that don't make their subs in the Premier League, but I I would um, imagine it would be you know quite a, a low number of teams that have played the ninety yeah. without without making a sub. What this reminds me of is um, having you know reading the decade, which was um, a, a great great read over over the last couple of months. It reminds me of um, a story in there where. I think it would have been uh, early 2000s when the club was in administration or on the verge of administration and really struggling. And, and the players are sort of talking about the fact that, you know, they'd bring a packed lunch from home. They would train once a week because the players had to go off and get other jobs because they weren't getting paid. They would chart sort of a route to away games that they could take the bus along and stop off at servos because otherwise they knew the bus was going to be breaking down. And it actually creates this really tight-knit culture where the players really bond and come together and and it sort of strengthens them because they have that singular focus on on playing on the weekend and um, obviously nowhere near to the same extent but in a similar way you've got such such a small squad up against it backs up against the wall just singularly focused on going out there and beating Leicester and I think was it before or was it after the game that the players sort of came together in a huddle and you could kind of feel that emotion and and I remember, you know, at the time on social media, everyone saying it just felt like at that point, it was all the players and all the fans, so all sort of pulling in one direction and were really supporting each other. And obviously, we saw that backed up at the Swansea match, and then um, you came really close to a point against United the following week as well. And then, <laughs> almost in the same way, when when the club came out of administration and the players started training every every day and they were getting paid and everything we started losing games and the players said well we should have stuck to what what we knew was working in a similar way you know transfer window came up we signed a couple of players boosted the squad um, everyone sort of breathed a little bit because it seemed like we were sort of up and running in the Premier League and then the concentration dropped and we, and we sort of fell away so in a similar it's it's really fascinating how in those really difficult situations it can almost make the players not play better but much more focused I guess yeah i think um it's a it seems to be a common thing throughout i guess just throughout football and and maybe even beyond football just like team sports in general seems to be when when there's a the club is a club is struggling in for whatever reason and and the the squad has to um like endure this hardship together it does um, like just strengthen the, those those bonds or whatever they um, and it it makes it interesting. I I can almost hear like some like guys like Huddleston and that talking like in like the post matches or, or like and that around the time saying like just echoing the sort of statements we're saying like we're talking about now about them you know just having to you know not having a choice and just having to go out and just give all for you know the guys around them because you know that's that's all there is there's no you know there is no option to to go and have a rest so they just had to sort of stick it out and everything so yeah so it's a it's a incredible game to look back on and uh <laughs> memories of a slightly better time where we had uh um, a pretty pretty strong core of players and it, it is kind of that it's going to be that sort of group of players are linked to that that time for the club where um you know, your Robertsons, Huddlestons, Davies, Snodgrass and everyone who um, are sort of a memory of a better time. But um, always always fun to sort of look back and remember um, great fixtures like that. Um, no, no further transfer news in the last 10 or so minutes while we've been talking. So um, it'll be interesting to see how the window wraps up and um, what players get announced in the next few hours. Um, any closing thoughts, Dan? Um, no, not really. I think... Um... We'll just, I'll just look forward to, um, to the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for joining me.
Not a problem. And thank you everyone for listening in. Until next time, come on City. You've been listening to the official Hull City Australia podcast. For more discussion, join us on Facebook in the Hull City AFC Australian Supporters Group or follow us on Twitter at Hull City AFC Oz. The music was created by Amber and Black. No turning back, cause you're out.